For many centuries, humanity has been guided by the idea of an authority situated outside the scope of any individual human control. This has mostly been rendered in the form of a belief in a higher power. The ancient mythical doctrines and religious stories had laid the foundations of the religious institutions which developed over time in different parts of the world about 2-3 thousand years ago. For most of history, humanity has had given the power in the hands of gods and goddesses, creatures and natural phenomena. Only within the past few centuries, however, this belief in an outside power controlling one's life and faith has shifted. It's become more of a personal supremacy over one's faith and over nature. The main reason for this is probably the developments in the centuries following the Middle Ages that happened in science and technology and the ever-expanding pool of human knowledge. Nowadays we live in a technologically dominated world, where religion and all of the other kinds of beliefs and superstitions, the occult, the magical, the folklore and fairy tales are often ignored or stay somewhere in the periphery for most humans. God has become a figment of the archaic imagination. Gods of any type are mere alien superstitions held once upon a time by naive, even primitive ancestors. This is not necessarily bad, I guess that's the path society has taken. There is this process in human thought that underlies how we perceive the world. The two terms which describe it are mimesis and poiesis. These terms come from ancient Greek philosophy. Mimesis means to imitate and poiesis means to make. Carl Truman talks about this in his book, The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self. In his words, quote, put simply, these terms refer to two different ways of thinking about the world. A mimetic view regards the world as having a given order and a given meaning and thus sees human beings as required to discover that meaning and conform themselves to it. Poiesis, by way of contrast, sees the world as so much raw material out of which meaning and purpose can be created by the individual. What is meant by this is, for example, if we go back tens of thousands of years or more in history, we can see that people back then depended on the outside world and the laws of nature way more than we do nowadays. Their understanding of the surroundings was almost none. That's why if a lightning bolt struck, this is a god. If the crops die by whatever reason, is the will of nature, and so on. But nowadays, with the increasing understanding of the laws of physics, biology and the universe, if something like this happens, we do not make such assumptions anymore. We search for the reason directly through experiments, find solutions for problems and build and create using given resources based on what the solution to the problem is. We do not just pray to God when someone's ill anymore. We send them to see the doctor first to find the cure by using the methods of modern medicine. And only in cases when the illness is pretty heavy and there is no actual treatment for it, we may go to pray because, I mean, what else is left there at the end to be done anyway? We can see that human thought evolved from a more mimetic leaning thinking to a more poetic way of thinking. This briefly shows what it means that the power has moved from outside sources to ourselves and our inner world. That's basically what the liberal idea of the freedom and the free will is based upon when it has started taking shape around the 17th century. But we haven't stopped there. The horizons of scientific knowledge are growing by the day, and with it, our understanding of the world goes deeper and deeper. Biological discoveries have already shown us that there is a specific cocktail of chemical reactions that happen to our bodies for every different emotion we experience. We now know that our feelings are not only far from being the God's will, but also, for the most part, they do not even come from a place we call free will. Feelings have turned out to be based on calculations that happen so fast and on such a subtle level that our consciousness misses to recognize them usually. We often do not even understand that we are under the influence of a certain emotion. And when we do, we describe them with words we invented for each one of them so we can convey easily our current emotional state to others, such as I just felt happy, sad or inspired. For example, we usually attribute some of the feelings of rightness or when we feel something is just right to intuition, not realizing that intuition Intuition is just another subtle process that happens inside our brain and body which usually has probably derived information from some past memory we may have forgotten or from something we know which is hiding somewhere deep in our subconsciousness. And that's why consciously we don't know why this thing feels right. We just uh, don't have the conscious capacity to feel all the tens of billions of neurons working simultaneously to make the right calculations for the best decisions we take constantly. That's why kids are usually really random and don't have any restraints, while adults are more often restricted in their behavior and make more logical and predictable choices. So, on the other side of all this so far are the information technologies, which are booming right now. The potential that AI and the algorithms hold has come to the knowledge of most of us already. The growing ability to collect, store and use large quantities of human biometric data becomes easier with each coming year. 
every single online activity, whether it is as small as just liking a friend's picture, leaves a certain online trail or footprint of each of us. Most of the data are collected and stored, and then fed to algorithms. Yuval Noah Harari talks about this in one of his books. He believes that soon we will see how the information technologies and the biological knowledge will merge into one, and eventually you will see a world where the large powerful algorithms would know almost everything about you, better than you know yourself. He says that the power we once gave to the individual will be shifted once more, this time from the individual to the machine, or the algorithms in this case. Deep, detailed, comprehensive knowledge about the human body and its chemical processes, plus the capacity to store and use large amounts of data plus the smart AI algorithms with calculation abilities far greater than ours would throw us into a world where the simple human judgment would be challenged by the growing power of technology. That's the moment we give out our own authority to the machines. They will be making decisions in big part of our lives. One could be presented with the exact message in the exact moment for the exact emotional reaction which can be used for and against humans. Such tech will be really powerful in the hands of big companies who try to sell you the exact thing you need at the exact moment. That will be the moment where humans are not anymore these sacred creatures of nature, but more or less hackable animals, in the words of Harari. Information in 21st century is probably the most powerful tool one can possess. With such knowledge and tech, one can manipulate, replace or ultimately re-engineer humans. Look for example at how sophisticated computers are getting at facial recognition. Soon it's believed that they might get better than humans at recognizing emotions just by scanning someone's facial expressions. We humans have evolved to be able to catch subtle muscle movements, tone of the voice and other body language to tell if someone's happy, angry or sad. But machines are catching up on this. An Ohio State this study has achieved near 100% accuracy after using facial recognition software in the identification of the six basic emotions among humans, and another 76% accuracy in the compound emotions. Such technology can be used by some to manipulate choices, mostly by marketers to sell stuff to customers for example, or by politicians if they want to influence the masses on a more subtle level. One of the key technologies in all this would be the biometric sensor. Advanced biometric sensors will turn chemical processes into electronic information which algorithms Rhythms and computers will then decipher for you. And because these sensors will be gathering information about you on a very deep level, you would know stuff that you wouldn't be able to know just by yourself. The field of medicine, along with probably pretty much any other aspect of human life, would be impacted greatly by these emerging technologies. Imagine being implanted with a sensor which has the ability to keep track on every small process and every single cell in your body simultaneously with 100% accuracy, giving you non-stop real-time data on what to eat, what medicine to take, how much to exercise and when, and everything else. Yuval Noah Harari suggests that when those times come, we will enjoy the best healthcare, but we will most probably feel the sickest of all time. Because our body is not perfect, it goes through many processes all the time, it changes a lot, and there is always something that does not fall within the bracket of a perfect condition. This means that we will constantly be diagnosed with something. But nevertheless, Harari believes that, quote, within just maybe 30 years, the poorest person on the planet Planet could be able to get better healthcare than the richest person today. Curiously enough, algorithms that define and help our daily choices do not need to be perfect. They only need to be a little better than us. And we, most of the people, are too narrow-minded, we know too little about ourselves and we take too many wrong decisions. Even though such algorithms might make some mistakes, if they're only a bit better, we would always choose them. And since we are far from perfect, I wouldn't imagine building one of those to be such a hard of a task for the big tech companies. We make it even easier for them by using all the different social media outlets and applications. We do pretty much everything there, watch movies, upload pictures, like and dislike all kinds of stuff of our choice. We're members of certain communities, we hate and love and love there. We upload and generate tons of biometric data. But even if it sounds a bit scary, I think everything depends on us and how we will choose to use this type of technologies in the future. I think the problem lies here. In our society, we focus on creating humble, simple and lazy human beings, the only purpose of whom are to serve the consumer society. We become more and more lethargic in our thinking while continuing to feed the huge algorithms of the big tech and social media companies through our continuous presence online. Eventually, that will lead to the creation of ubiquitous machines which will render vast parts of human society obsolete. It will create the so-called useless class of people. The world is getting more and more competitive and we have to keep ourselves learning and providing something valuable to society, therefore escaping the trap of the useless class. This really looks like the modern way of the survival of the fittest. 
I guess time will tell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.